I'm Elisa Parker. We're broadcasting from the Wild and Scenic Film Festival here in Nevada City, California. It, I tell you, during this festival, thousands of extraordinary people come and they converge and they share solutions and they're obviously sharing stories. We haven't met in person in actually three years for this festival. So I think more than ever, we have such an incredible group of people that have uh, come here and I'm so excited to feature our next guest, Junior Rodriguez and Faith. Faith, what is your last name? Faith Briggs. Briggs. Rose. Okay. Um, and she's actually produced several of the films that are featured here, so we'll talk about that as well. But Waiting for Change is the film that uh, Junior is part of, created, and featured in. Yeah. Fly Fisherman. Fly Fisherman. Did you ever think, what, did you, like as a child, did you ever think that's something you would be into and doing like in jackson hole wyoming i don't know about jackson hole but i know that i always loved um being on the water because it reminded me of my family and i would see photographs of you know fly fishermen out in the yellowstone morning there's a mist and they're casting uh, and i thought maybe one day that could be me and my family always says uh creer es poder believing is power um so my mom and family would just say like if you believe it hard enough like it'll happen um, well and you talk about in the movie missing your family do they come up have they come up and visited and ha are you have you taught them some fly fishing techniques they did because it's a big part visit. of your film with your family and yeah i was i was a little edgy i'm gonna say edgy you, know, you don't really talk back to your like parents in a latino family and Everybody was on edge because the pandemic was happening. A lot of places were getting sold from under uh, people that were renting. And my mom was like, oh, one day we'll come. And I was like, mom, it's been like five years. Like, you keep saying that. When I lived in Portland, you said, like, you were going to come. You never came. And, and um, yeah, so I kind of, I was a little edgy with her. And that caused them to buy flights the next week. And they came out um, two falls ago. And they were just amazed by it. Right, a little different than Texas. Oh, just so a little bit. Slightly different than <laughs> Texas. And how, how did you and Faith connect with each other? Yeah, so this film is co-directed by Junior and Sofia Jaramillo. Um, I had been in touch with Sofia about a few different projects. She has a photography background but was moving into filmmaking. I think for me, there was a time where it seemed that I was the only black woman director in the outdoor space. Um, once that was pointed out to me, I really kind of try to make it my mission to try to keep figuring out who else wants to do film. I feel like I've been recruiting photographers. I've just been trying to support more um, historically underrepresented voices behind the camera as well as in front of the camera so we can be telling our own stories with a crew that also understands maybe where we're coming from and right. has some shared culture. Relatable with the people that you're featuring and, mm -hmm. and the story. Yeah. And I'm also an angler, so the, Get the, out. Yeah, you are? the story definitely was one that struck a chord with me. And so, yeah, well, the three of us got together and I was super excited to be able to come uh, be a part of the project. Yeah. Describe what it feels like when you're out on the river and how, like, when you're in that process, I, it's like this, is it like a meditative process too? Because you're casting and and such and 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 <laughs> so i haven't done it yet before but obviously connecting with others here at the festival and we have the yuba river so um fly fishing and you call it an angler yeah, yeah. An so angler, what yeah. so you're out there for a couple hours like what does that feel like i funny enough when i was on my way walking down here i saw people doing casting lessons no in way. the park up on sacramento so that was kind of fun it felt like a good omen nice. um but yeah i think it's it is very meditative um normally you can't really fish right next to someone so you're maybe like downstream from your friend so you're kind of like or you're you're with them but you're also spending some time with yourself with the river they say there's a reason why it's called um, fishing and not catching, because <laughs> you're not always you're catching. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's just beautiful to be like literally immersed in nature um, in a way that I feel like only happens in the river, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, I think I, I, I totally agree with Faith. Um, you just, everything kind of melts away because you're so focused on your cast. It's kind of like Nordic skiing i guess you you can't really be thinking about other things or you're gonna mess up and what's ironic about fly fishing why i started fly fishing in jackson is that i was kind of tired of um 
all of like the homogenous culture and it was like about that yeah it was like my way to sort of escape it and take a break from it so sort of that solitude um would sort of recharge me and i guess double irony would just make me sadder because it would remind me of my family because you know we i'd be in the water and we used to have um a fresh spring water lake that we would swim in um every like easter and summer so um a lot of a lot of pointed, you know, double-edged sword with fly fishing for me. Right. Well, and you talk about it in the film, waiting for change of, of the shock, and you talk about the sadness coming to a community. Uh, so you know, the films also focus, and, and we've had several guests here now, which I love, of, of focusing on diversifying what it and going beyond boundaries, of making it, this is accessible for everyone, and it's also not about fitting in to something else but it's about like this is what it looks like for me and showcasing that story and you talk about junior you know being in jackson hole just kind of like the shock like oh my gosh and and so you are being you're the courageous pioneer that's out there like this is i'm going to show you different ways of what this looks like yeah yeah what's funny about the culture shock is um i used to travel a lot in my 20s and you know i went to school in portland and I was totally fine, you know, going to Cambodia, going to Thailand, going to Mexico, like no real culture shock. I just felt like I was one. But in Jackson, um, it it took a toll uh, so much so that I had to like get a therapist. Cause I was like, what is happening to me? Like, this doesn't make any sense. And, and the therapist was saying like, well, in Houston, there's like massive amounts of wealth too, but you know, they live on the West side. So you're not like rubbing shoulders with them. You're in your own little community. Um, yeah, that so that took a took a major toll. Um, but we're fine now. <laughs> yeah, you're doing good. You have a good community yeah. there. Yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. It took a long time to build. Uh, right. we've got some Puerto Ricans, we got some Mexicans, we got Colombians. You know, we're all trying to change the outdoor space in our own ways, whether it's writing, local politics, storytelling. That's fantastic. And Faith, what is it? You know, with this film. Uh, what do you want everyone to, for both of you, to be able to take away uh, from this and applying to their own everyday lives? What would that look like for you? What would your message be? Yeah, that? I think one of the things I think about when I look at Junior's story is like, um, just because the load, just because you're carrying the load well, doesn't mean it's not heavy. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's very yeah. well said. And I think that's something what's more and more with the social context changing. We're, you know, seeing more and more stories about historically marginalized people being the onlys and the first. And while there's a lot to celebrate about that, I think it's also very often we're showing the celebratory part, but we're not showing the part where it's also hard to be away from what you know so well. Um, and so I think it's one of the things I really appreciate about Waiting for a Change is being able to show all of it, you know, show the joy, show the work Junior is doing to invite others in and also show how hard it is to have to do that in a space that can be so uninviting at the same right. time. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And part of the <coughs> film, you're actually instructing and showing others yes. in the community. So what has that experience been like and where, what does that look like now? Yeah, uh, what's interesting about that is that we started filming back in like my 20s, my late 20s. So I was still working at my nine to five and I was trying to get more people of color on the water and into conservation by getting creating programs uh, that gets them to experience a place because you can't really care about a space or a place if you can't experience it. And it was a little odd with... Um, the conservation org because it was um, a preservation sort of L they were preserving land so like it was like you can't touch it hmm. but we had a few public access places where that's where I could do programming um, so that's what I was trying to do. It was very frustrating to try and get programs off the ground because everybody was white and they didn't really understand the value um, after BLM then my bosses started saying like why aren't you doing these programs like i've been trying yeah i've been trying to do them <laughs> yeah i've been trying to do this and um i've left that job now to do storytelling full time and um but i'm also on the tu board what's the tu it's board? trout unlimited okay so now i'm trying to uh still make those programs but just through a different outlet through a different organization that's fantastic focused on storytelling are you traveling around 
the yeah, country now? Yeah, I just got back from Alaska, like wow. right before this, to help uh, shoot a friend who's a uh, clinket, uh, tell her story of um, coming back to her homelands and. Yeah, we were shooting a lot of skiing. That's fantastic, a lot of skiing. Yeah. Well, please keep us posted on that and, and how we could be supportive. And also, hopefully, you can feature some other films at Wild and Scenic as well. Um, yeah, maybe even do a fly fishing thing. You know, yeah. Here, you know. And yeah. Faith, what are you up to next? What's You have several films, so Outlier. Okay. Do we want to say a little thing about Outlier yeah, right now? Because um, that's a great, that's a beautiful t- two young women who are... Uh, out pursuing, you know, outdoor adventure in the snow, and Danny and is a Leilani. 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 Yeah, I, w- I was. It's once again another film. I was so proud to be able to come on and support. It was really Danny Reyes Acosta's vision. Um, it's her first time uh, directing a film that was going to be a festival film, and as Junior knows, it's hard to be directing and in the film and trying to figure out which parts of your story to share, which parts to keep how to share that story. Um, but for Danny and Lonnie, for both of them, they hadn't had the experience of going out in the backcountry with another Latina skier. Um, so that was really, the goal was to help them have that experience and see what it taught them about each other, what it taught them about their relationships being in the mountains. They come from very different backgrounds in the mountains, um, but I think there's a lot of learning um, that they experience being out there together. It's a beautiful film. When I was watching it, my sister overheard. She's like an outdoor enthusiast as well. She's like, that sounds amazing. I need to check that out. And who are these women? I need to mm-hmm. connect with them. Yeah, I wanted to say for that film, our producer, Sarah Steele, is a woman who has a woman-focused um, production company. I co-directed our um, cinematographer, Sophie Dannison, is a woman. Leslie Hitmeyer, our um, photographer as a woman so it was a really woman powered project which is something we were also really proud of that's awesome that's great and on our film we had an entirely BIPOC crew um, directing shooting editing yeah something else we're proud of Sophia wishes she could be here and I just want to you know Give She's the one so you were much. telling me about. Yes. Okay. Sophia. Well, no, Sophia Jaramillo is a director okay. of Waiting for Change. And um, huge gratitude to her and Mason. Um, it's been a lot of sweat and tears in a lot of years. What do you, um, last question, what do you want to say to everyone, um, especially of the communities who f- have felt marginalized or underrepresented with their voices? What do you want to say to them about why it's so important to have the courage and share their story? And a lot of this too is like charting your own way and it's not about fitting in to what seems like the standard. I would say who you are and who we are is the story, is the culture. I mean, uh, we've been the backbone of this country. We've been the backbone of creating culture. So I think rather than play small and try to fit into the box of what we think the outdoors needs to be, we all win when we bring our full selves out there. Yeah, yeah, and I think I totally agree. And I think people, huge stars like Bad Bunny are showing you that you don't have to change. You don't have to fit into a box. You can continually be yourself and the right people will listen. And sometimes it's not for others, but it's for your own community. And I think that's what we're trying to do. These stories are for ourselves um, and hope that the rest of the communities also enjoy it. Well, Junior and Faith, it was such a pleasure having you here, um, joining us today, but also just with Wild and Scenic in general, sharing the stories, Outlier and Waiting for Change. Um, do check them out. Are they still, when are they being screened? There's one more screening, um, well, no, two more. He's like, two does more. Do you remember? Today and tomorrow, tomorrow. so at one about. o'clock today <laughs> and at 1020 tomorrow, you can check out okay. Waiting for Change, and then mm-hmm. there's an 830 screening of Outlier um, tonight as well. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, and keep us posted on other things you have coming up. But thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure to connect with both thank of you. you. So much. Thank and, you. And uh, I'm Elisa Parker. It's the Wild and Scenic Film Festival. This is the Media Lounge. This is one of the best festivals around. And uh, we're so glad that you're part of it as well. And we will be right back.